Hello, my name is John and I am the science educator for Children's Museum Houston. We're going to learn about something called fiber optics. And before we dive into the fiber optics, what we need to learn first is something called refraction, which you've probably done or seen before. So when you place a pencil or an object in water or in oil, it kind of gives you this optical illusion. And what you're seeing is something called refraction. And all refraction is, is the change in direction of a wave. And in this case, it's light waves. So when light enters the water, it actually changes the speed. And so that's really what causes this illusion. But it is also something that impacts the way that we communicate. But I think we need to dive a little deeper. To communicate all across the world, we use some hard wire that's going all the way to a phone maybe in your house. We have radio waves that are sent and to transmit information between cell phones. And then we also have this fiber optic, which is can be as small as this little cable here to send information using coded light waves, which is really cool. But we need to do a couple experiments to show why it works and why we can use this tiny cable to send information back and forth. Fiber optic is usually made of plastics like acrylic or polystyrene. And fiber optics send information coated in beam of light down a glass or plastic piping. The fiber has a core material that has high level of refraction, meaning light rays bend more in the material, and has another layer called cladding that has a low level of refraction to keep the light in the core. Light travels down a fiber optic cable by bouncing repeatedly off the walls. The light is kept inside the cable because of something called total internal reflection, where the light hits at a very shallow angle and reflects back. This is frequently used in computers, radio and TV broadcasting, medical technology, and military technology. Thank you for tuning in to our Geeks, Gadgets, and Gizmos Wonder Week. This is the first day of five, so stay tuned all week long. We've got extra workshops and educator moments that are coming daily, so stay tuned to that. And if you are following us through YouTube, please hit that subscribe button so you can get this daily content that's coming out. Again, my name is John, science educator for Children's Museum Houston, and we'll see you next time.